welcome back. Today we're going to take this standard A500 Ref 6A and turn it into an Amiga 500 Plus. Let's go! You may remember that I bought a whole bunch of A500 boards, I guess it was 12 or so, no 10, um, 8 standard A500 boards and 2 A500 plus boards and I've since gone and repaired all the A500 boards which you may have seen in my previous videos and I took the 2 A500 plus boards which were not, uh, I was not able to rescue and took off all the custom chips and stuff like that and tried to build a new A500 Plus. I'm still in progress so I'm missing a few parts still but let me show you what I have. So this is my board so far. You can see there's quite some stuff on here but it's also missing quite some stuff up here and on the sides and all these chips I cannot take from the A500 Plus boards because they just break. They just, uh, if I try to use soldering iron, they have three legs, no chance. If I use heat, they just break. So I thought, and that was in a moment of uh, weakness, can I turn a standard A500 plus board like this Rev A, uh, this Rev 6A I have here into an A500 plus and look see, that actually works would be even easier if it was a Rev8 board because Rev8 boards are pretty much just um, A500 plus boards which have uh, no clock circuit and the old kickstart and the old Paula and the old um, Agnes chip and only 512k of RAM. But what we can do is we can add some RAM to this and I used this board specifically because all the holes on the ramps are free, they are not soldered, so I will put sockets in here. You have to put some um, some caps here and we will put in we'll put in the Super Denise up here. And Currently there's an 8372A um, here which will enable the one Mac of chip RAM if we put in the RAM chips. And using the Super Denise chip will give us better graphics modes and all that's missing then is the internal clock and maybe we can even get that working um, but not in this video. So that's what we will attempt today. Try to and we will of course put in the Kickstart 2.0. Okay I have a Kickstart switcher here which has 1.3 on it right now. It's hard to see. It's from also from one of the Amiga 500 boards. We'll put in the 2.0 Kickstart in here and then we have the perfect Amiga 500 Plus. Okay, there's not much work to do, so let's get right to it. Okay, took the board out, and what we are going to do first is put in sockets right here and put in some of these, these caps. Sockets. Yeah, let's do this. I have to check if I have the right sockets, otherwise, I will just stack some. So, of course, I don't have the right sockets, so I will just, so the end, I need a 10 pin socket here, I will just stick in a 7 pin and a 3 pin and that will work perfectly fine. We just have this double gate in the middle but I don't care, still works. So I will put these in, solder these in, put in the caps and go from there. So the fresh sockets are in. Before I solder the caps and uh, do the modification on the board which is just two jumpers in the uh, Ref 6A, we will just check if the machine still works and which kind of memory it gives us so that we have some kind of bottom line here. And as you can see we have 362728 free memory and that is the chip RAM and chip RAM is used for sound and graphics and if you have more chip RAM you can have better graphics modes and stuff like that versus the fast RAM which is just memory which can be used but is not directly addressed by the uh, CPU. 
Okay, so let's go back to the board and do the modifications. Okay, according to this document, we have to do two modifications to the board. The first one has to do with jumper 2 or JP2. And uh, this is a modification you have to do to the Ref5 motherboard. So this is how the jumper looks before, or the three pads. There's one um, that is standalone and two are connected and you have to pretty much cut the two connected and solder the standalone to the middle one. So this will be the first thing we do and the jumper is located right here. This is JP2. Okay, so we have to cut here and we have to solder a little blob up here. So that's our little blob of solder. And now let me go in and cut the connection with a blade. that we did indeed cut it we use the multimeter put it in continuity and let's see yeah no continuity here but continuity here which is good okay that was the first one and the second one is JP7A which is right here and that is indeed connected down here and we have to just cut the connection. Just take the blade and cut right through it. Let's check for continuity, there should be none, no beep, no beep, no beep, no beep, all good. Okay, so that is pretty much all the modification that there is, now I have to put in the caps and then we're good to put in the RAM chips which I desoldered from the A500 Plus and see if we get one meg of chip RAM. So the memory chips are in, the caps are in. Put back in the kickstart switcher, which is still 1.3. Edit a disk drive and let's see if booting into Workbench shows that we have 800 something of chipmen. Because if it does, that conversion has worked. And then we will go on and we will put in the Super Denise and check for the better graphics modes and of course we have to put in a 2.0 ROM because else we won't see the graphics modes. And success! We have 800 something chip mem which is awesome. Great! Okay so step one of our conversion of a a500 Rev6 into an Amiga 500 Plus is done. Let's go for the next step. And that would be to put in the Super Denise, but first we have to put in a Kickstart 2.0, use the switcher and try the battery backed up clock on my little uh, memory expansion. Okay, my little memory expansion is in. Saw that the battery is removed. I just did that, completely forgot about it. Oh, and I didn't even turn off the machine, which is not good. Oh, look at that. Battery backup clock found. <laughs> Let's see if we still have the chip, ma'am. Or if this really overlays the chip, ma'am, and uh, we only have the standard 300 something in Workbench. Yeah, it's still there. Awesome. I have no idea if it works, because we just see it here, but let's pretend it does for now and we will test this thoroughly later. Okay, so now we have the clock, we have the memory expansion. Let's put in the 
kickstart, let's see what graphics modes we get in Workbench 2.0. And then let's put in the Super Denise to actually get the better graphics modes. And that would be a complete conversion. Okay, I put in my kickstart 2.0 ROM here. And instead of using the Workbench 1.3, we're using the Workbench 3.0. And no worries, I actually do have I actually do have the original discs down here. So these are just backups. And if you load into Workbench 3.0 and you want to set the graphics mode without installing it all on a hard disk, you have to use the extras disk. So let's first turn on the machine, see if it works. It looks good. And we have a 2.0 ROM. So let's switch that and put in the extras disk. As you can see here, we have 800 something graphics mem and zero other mem. And here we should have under prefs screen modes. Yeah, that is. And this is still without the Super Denise, which I will put in later. Just check which graphics modes we get here. Doesn't even work. Okay, so I assume we need a Super Denise chip to actually start the screen mode program. Well, let's... Uh then go and install that. Okay, so I have my very special manufactured screwdriver for this, which is a little bent. And with this, I can get under here and just turn this a little. So I'll never use it as a lever. Always put it in and turn it, because then you don't scratch the board underneath. We are switching an 8362R8 with an 8373R4PD and the orientation is like this and as I said this comes from A500 plus and I have no idea if this just works but we will find out right now and let's see if we can now start the screen mode to So sure about that. Nope. No screen mode for us. Why is that? So I have a Super Denise in here, but I can't use it. So I may have to go and create some Kickstart 2.0 discs for that. So I did put the old Denise in here, the A500 Denise. The Super Denise is over here. And I have a Kickstart 2.05 install disk. And that is actually also a workbench disk. So if I just boot that, I had to attach a keyboard, by the way, because you have to input something at some point here. Okay, so let's see if we get graphics modes. And here we have screen mode. And yay! And we have PAL HIRES and PAL HIRES interlaced. So we have 640 by 512 or we have 640 by 256. These are the two modes that are supported by this Denise. So let's switch the Denise and see if we get more graphics mode. So, Super Denise is in. Let's switch this on again. Turn it on, turn it on, turn it on again. Yeah, don't want to get copyright slammed here because I sing a Genesis song, so better shut up. If that works, actually, we would have pretty much an A500 plus, which would be awesome. And you can do this too. Screen mode and <laughs> 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 
super high res interlaced and super high res mode 1280 by 256 so this actually works let's try it yeah it does work that is very cool <laughs> awesome okay so now we have officially an A500 plus. Nice. And all we had to do was to put in the memory chips, the little sockets, some caps um, for the memory chips, put in a Super Denise and have the right Fat Agnes, which is in my case the 8372A. You could use an 8375 but it wouldn't make any difference because that's only used for the AG8 modes um, which are not supported by the A500 Plus. So we have an ECS A500 Plus versus the stock OCS A500. And I also added a floppy switcher here, which I will have to put a switch on so that I can switch between the DF0 and DF1. And I have here a little adapter which allows me to use just any PC floppy drive with my Amiga. And I plan to put this inside the Amiga and not as it's intended on the outside, on the port, but I want to solder that to the inside so that I have an Amiga with two floppy connectors and I can then, sw can then switch between the two. And I can use that for my GoTech. Yeah, so I guess this is pretty much it for this episode. Thanks for watching and it's high risk mode for an A500 Plus. It's unbelievable. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, goodbye. Thank you for watching Retro is the New Black. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. If you like the video, please share. Every like, share and comment helps a lot. Until next time, bye bye.